Hey friends, welcome to the channel. I'm Ken Smith and today we are going to start uh, finishing off our frame. Now we want to thank KBS Coatings for supplying us with all of the products that we're going to go ahead and use to clean and seal the frame today. So let's get started. Okay, so everything that you see right here is what comes in the kit. The KBS Clean is what is going to uh, remove any grease and some other contaminants that might be in this area. The KBS Blast is what's actually going to um, neutralize the rust that we currently have. And it's going to place a phosphate coating, which is going to, in a, in a sense, act as a like an etch. And then we'll use our rust seal. And that is kind of a nice self-leveling paint. I ch chose to get the satin versus the gloss. It comes in two flavors. I picked satin. Also comes with the spray bottle right here that you can use uh, for both the clean and the blast. And if you notice on top of the rust seal, you'll see a pair of rubber gloves and a disposable brush. So really, everything that you need comes inside this wonderful kit right here. All right, so the first thing that you want to do before you use any of the, the KBS Coatings products um, is you want to kind of get any of the loose rust that you might have and just kind of knock that off. Now, what I did, I, did, I actually used a couple of different things. The first thing I did... Um, in any of the tight spots was I just used wire brush on my Ryobi uh, driver and then for some of the really accessible spots that had a lot of scale on them uh, I actually used uh, a sander with some really heavy grit sandpaper and just kinda went over those areas for the more tougher to get spots I used a couple of different things, and I'll show you those here. Um, or maybe inside the frame, I used wire brush for some of the tighter spots, smaller wire brush. And for some really heavy scale, I just used a small file and just kind of, you know, got in there and kind of worked around, kind of like around the running board supports and whatnot. And so this is kind of what I used to just kind of knock off a lot of the scale and whatnot. When I got done with that, I pressure washed it. Uh, and again, that just helps to eliminate some of, the, uh, some of the residue, some of the grease and whatnot that really allows this product to excel and do a great job in getting everything cleaned before uh, we begin to etch and so and seal. And, and so uh, the first thing that it says is to work in a well-ventilated place. Obviously, I'm in my garage. It's kind of raining outside. Uh, just kind of a little bit of a drizzle and whatnot. So what I'm going to do is just open up the garage doors. I'm working right to the edge of the garage door, so it should be pretty well-ventilated. Um, and we're going to go ahead and start getting everything ready. All right, so with our garage doors open, we're gonna go ahead and we're just gonna start spraying this in. You really want um, a good liberal application all the way onto everything. And the reason why um, is this, this is just really your way of you know prepping everything and making sure that everything is just super nice and clean giving the rust blast the best chance of getting all that rust sealed and ready to um, get her get her painted Now you can leave this on for, say, 15 minutes, even up to an hour. What you don't want to do 
is let it dry. So you want to make sure that whatever it is that you're doing, it's, uh, it's staying moist, it's staying wet. And so keep that in mind as you are applying the product. All right, we've let this sit for about an hour. So now we're going and actually just kind of washing things down, getting, uh, getting the, uh, the cleaner off. You can see, look at what a great job that's done. Just getting that extra bit of grease and yuck that I didn't get off from pressure washing. And again, just really, really impressed with the product and how it's worked. Now, the one thing I definitely do want to mention is that it's, again, a biodegradable, water-soluble product. So you, I don't have to worry about the environment. I don't have to worry about my dog or my neighbor's dogs if they get in the yard or wild birds or any other wild animals. I mean, I do live in the country here in East Tennessee. So I want to be cognizant of, the, of that. But again, just really, really impressed with how things clean up. When we get done here, we're going to go ahead, bring it inside, let it dry, and we're going to get on to the next phase. All right, we're at our second step in the three-step process. We're going to go ahead and now apply our rust blast. And just like we applied the rust clean, we want to make sure that we get a nice liberal coating all the way across what we want to treat and also we want to make sure because this is going to this is what's going to etch the metal and we want to make sure that in this process we don't allow this to dry because this is going to create a, a phosphate coating which is essentially similar to like an etching primer this is going to etch the metal and this is what's going to allow the final product, the final finish, to stick to the frame. So we're going to go ahead and get this all done, and we'll see you on the flip side. Now, if you're curious as to how well rust blast etches metal, just take a look at these aluminum trays, and you can see for yourself it has no problem etching anything really uh, any form of metal which is kind of interesting because like here right here this this is actually where no rust blast actually hit <laughs> um, or there might have been some grease there I'm not really too sure but uh, I also after pulling it in that's still wet but you can see how it actually etched these bolts and the top shock. Um, so again, we're just gonna let her completely dry overnight, take a good look at it, get it close and personal, and see what you think as well as what I think. Well, we've given it a good bath. We've allowed it to thoroughly dry. And as you can see, it has done a fabulous job just etching everything and prepping the surface for our final coat and i'm really really pleased with how this just came out and again you know this is not the uh, uh this is not a point car restoration by any means but we still want to do a really nice job at what we have to work with and so we are getting ready now to apply our finished coat. With the rust seal they provide disposable uh, gloves and a brush and we're gonna go ahead and use that. You just want to apply it. Don't worry about any brush strokes because it's self-leveling and it is going to go on 
pretty pretty smooth it's not super super thick you can kind of see that right there I think the only drawback about any cheap tool brush like this cheap paintbrush is the fibers coming loose and getting stuck into your paint and you know what I'm talking about I've got one right there try to slip that one off we'll get the camera up close so that you can really see it um, I ordered the satin finish because I didn't want a super gloss although it does kind of look like I'm, I'm laying down gloss but that's really not the case I'm very impressed with this. Go ahead and get the camera over so you can kind of take a look. I'm going to try and do an area that will give you kind of a live view of how this is going on. So we'll, we'll kind of do this area right here. supply is very easy um, you definitely want to have something down for catching drips because this stuff's pretty permanent and so once it's down it's it's down it's stuck on whatever it is that you it has come in contact with now this area right here I'm not going to paint over and the reason being we're actually going to weld uh, an extension on here because we're the goal is to actually put a um, a trailer hitch on so I'm just going to kind of show you remember I said you don't have to really worry too much about brush strokes and again my frame is not perfect uh, when you look at it, it um, from a cosmetic standpoint but for a driver it's in pretty decent shape get that, that hair out of there fiber out of there Now we're supposed to actually do two coats. This is the first coat, and again, it's obviously wet. And I really, really like how this is kind of laid down. There's another one of those cheap hairs. I might end up switching a, to a brush, a better, better looking brush that I can just throw away. Yeah, not too fond about that. A little touch up there, maybe. This seems to dry pretty quick. Um, that was actually, that area, as, as you saw, was quite tacky. Now we're not going to film the whole whole process, but we're going to go ahead and continue working on it. 
and we'll show you what it looks like after we get done with our one coat. All right, we've got this half of the frame completely done. Now we've got our KBS Coatings frame seal on it, and it's looking really, really good. This stuff is rock hard. When it cures, it's done. If you spill any on the floor, forget it. If you don't wipe it off, you will not get it off. Uh, now we did leave this section here in as, as, uh, with nothing on it, and the reason being is we're gonna go ahead and weld uh, a little frame extension on the back end, both sides, uh, so that we can put a trailer hitch right about in this area here. And we're thinking about building a woody style trailer, but I don't want to say anything more than that right now because that'll just give away too many things. But anyhow, that's what she's looking like. We're going to go ahead, get our cowl lined up there, make sure that it lines up with our our radiator and whatnot before we take the front fenders off and start working on that section of the frame so that's going to do it for this video hey remember to give us a like and subscribe that's important to us but more than anything else you guys y'all be blessed